Hello and good afternoon. My name is Christian Bankov. Um, I'm a mutation working at uh, New Bulgarian University as head of the Southeast European Center for Semiotic Studies. I would like to thank to the organizers of uh, this uh, event, this uh, interesting uh, high-tech uh, academic event. Uh, special thanks to uh, Irina Petrovna for inviting me. I'm very excited to take part in this uh, uh, discussion. I'll try to give my uh, contribution from the point of view of semiotics. I see that the uh, character of the other invited uh, speakers is quite different. It's a multidisciplinary approach to this problem. So I will stress what, uh, on what semiotics uh, helped me to understand how applying semiotic models of culture and especially one, the Umberto Eco's model of encyclopedia, how I somehow constructed a hypothesis uh, uh, trying to describe the transformations of the way young people elaborate knowledge, young people uh, relate uh, to knowledge and uh, what might be expected for the future. All this I put in an uh, article called uh, Cultures of uh, Erudition versus Cultures of Navigation. So I will follow more or less uh, uh, the semiotic part of this article in order to, uh, to position my uh, input uh, within this uh, discipline. Although from my everyday experience, from my everyday observations to the young people, um, I have a lot of uh, other things to say about this, but let's see what is more relevant to the semiotic discourse. Now, um, by the way, the whole uh, research, this uh, cultures of navigation versus cultures of erudition uh, program, research program, start from uh, observation. My observation was mostly based on the fact that uh, after uh, certain years of uh, net, uh, internet usage by our students, they started in, I speak in a statistically relevant way, uh, many of our students started to be more and more reluctant in writing, in writing a text, in inventing uh, ways to express what they have learned. Somehow uh, I noticed how uh, learning at the university was uh, more and more uh, substituted by uh, trying to uh, perform with collecting existing text from the internet and putting them together. Actually uh, um, then I found other uh, observations, other articles which were uh, uh, going in the, the direction of uh, how memory works, but from the semiotic, for the semiotic perspective it was the work with the text, the, the basic, the initial point. So, what was pushing and in such a relevant way uh, students not to write? Uh, I made some interviews, also one of the uh, written homeworks for uh, the students from the uh, introductory course in semiotics, which is a very populated course with very many students. I put there uh, a topic as an assignment, as a way they to, to, to express their view uh, on it. And this was uh, exactly uh, how internet was used nowadays for substituting uh, part of the uh, conventional task of students to study, to uh, remember and to be able within his own resources, the present, not the augmented resources through the computer, but his own resources to uh, perform this knowledge. So why this was not happening anymore in the way uh, we used to expect it and the way the, uh, I would say, uh, the universities con conceived to, to do it in this uh, way, to transfer knowledge and then to uh, request from the student a uh, rational, academic uh, uh, and most of all written uh, exposure of uh, what the student has uh, learned. Now, uh, after uh, 
thousands of interviews, uh, I started to have uh, a, a better idea and actually all the time I was investigating into this problem, I was using uh, a model, a model of culture by um, Umberto Eco. Now, um, Umberto Eco called uh, this model of culture encyclopedia. Actually, in order to introduce this theoretic model, uh, Umberto Eco uh, compared it and somehow uh, convinced the reader that uh, culture works very much more like a um, uh, rhizomatic, rhizomatic encyclopedia without hierarchical structures inside it or without a general hierarchy in the uh, notions and in the knowledge rather than uh, the let's say conceived already by Aristotle and then developed by many other uh, thinkers in the Middle Ages and uh, in the Enlightenment with the encyclopedists conception that the uh, knowledge structure of the world should be hierarchical and uh, uh, dictionary like okay so uh, the basic approach of Umberto Eco to uh, explain already in the early 70s what was the uh, mechanism uh, of culture to work uh, uh, he was uh, kind of criticizing the uh, tree like the hierarchical like model of culture of uh, uh, previous authors and uh, uh, he was defining this Q model at the beginning was called Q by Quinlan model but then of course Umberto Eco put so much of his uh, semiotic uh, uh, notions that uh, I would say that uh, after all this is Umberto Eco's model of culture as encyclopedia. So Umberto Eco was defining culture as uh, something very very similar to what afterwards became internet. So my starting point was to reflect on this affinity, how in the early 70s uh, Umberto Eco was conceiving the encyclopedia, the, the culture as a encyclopedia, a rhizomatic encyclopedia where uh, let's say virtually you can start from one point and your knowledge was uh, organized in a way to uh, that you can start from one point and arrive to another point to, from one notion to another not necessarily passing through the same uh, other notions whereas the hierarchical model was more or less that that uh, our knowledge if it's truthful necessarily will have to follow the same basic structure so, according to uh, Umberto Eco, but uh, Umberto Eco just got the, the model, the, the, the idea of this rhizomatic model by um, got, uh, by uh, Deleuze and uh, Gattari, but of course in Deleuze and Gattari uh, uh, it was a very uh, vision visionary uh, insight, whereas Umberto Eco uh, took it and uh, uh, transformed it into uh, a, a rational uh, and very well uh, working model. So. Uh, Umberto Eco, in order to uh, determine the, the encyclopedic model of, of culture, actually he started from the problem of the text, from a text pragmatics. So the main concern of Umberto Eco to understand how the interpretation of text uh, uh, works was to establish the very active collaborative role of the reader. Actually, through the role of the reader, we have the better, the best explanation of the model of the encyclopedia. Now, um, this basic model of uh, textual cooperation, as called by uh, Umberto uh, Eco, presupposes that uh, the reader is absolutely not a passive uh, entity in the uh, interpretation of the text. On the contrary, that the reader makes a lot of work, and actually, the author requires this work of the reader and the work of the reader is mostly uh, the exercise of his own encyclopedic competence okay now if we want to find out why uh, newer generation have this um, problematic uh, relation to accumulating knowledge in their minds according to me this notion of individual encyclopedic competence which in the conventional way in the printed culture to which we belong, which is different from the contemporary digital culture. In the printed culture we were supposed to know a lot of things, our individual uh, 
uh, encyclopedic competence was supposed to be reached in order to be able to collaborate with the author. So we were interpreting text and these texts were working because the author presupposes that we know certain things, that we have a uh, particular uh, encyclopedic competence and thanks to our com encyclopedic competence we were able to um, fulfill, to accomplish uh, uh, the knowledge, the information and the, the narrative the narrative put uh, by the author in the text was requesting our active collaboration and uh, 